G'day folks, it's Cortezarino, and today I'm going to show you how to build this Japanese cook's house. And you might have already seen this in my castle base time lapse. And this one is super duper easy to build, and I specifically designed it that way because I wanted you to be able to build this over and over just with slight variations and suddenly you've got five or ten extra houses for your city or castle complex. So you'll notice the walls of this building are very, very simple. You can just throw them up in just a couple of minutes. But the roof is a very elegant design because if you've got a lot of these houses in the city, usually you're only going to be seeing the roof because they're all closely packed together. So yeah, we've put all the detail into the roof and kept the walls very basic. And like always, I do an interior for this. And yeah, this is the cook's house. So we've got a huge cooking pot over a fire pit, a little kitchen area. We've got a table sunk into the ground. And the next room is just a bedroom with a little study. So let's get started. We're going to begin with a rectangle that is 19 blocks by 9 blocks. And you can build this completely out of stone. And the entrance is going to be on one of the longer sides. So come along to the right hand side here. We're going to count in five blocks. So one, two, three, four, five. Against the fifth, we're going to place another stone block in front and a cobblestone right there. In front of that, we're going to place some stone stairs and then switch to cobblestone stairs. And we're going to run them around that side and we'll put two on that side, and that's where your entrance will be. Now come along to the left hand side, we're going to put a cobblestone stair right there, and then looking from the other direction, another cobblestone stair. Then we're going to go three campfires, grab your shovel and put them out, and we will do the same up this end. Three campfires right next to your stairs. Now on the end of those, we're going to put a spruce slab, and then we're going to run campfires all the way along here. And you can put them out as well. And just make sure you're facing in the same direction that I am. So the logs of the campfire up the top are all facing in the same direction. Okay, now we're going to place down a mixture of stone stairs and cobblestone stairs. And we're just going to run these all the way around our building. Everywhere except for this wall right here. And this is how you should be looking when you're done with your stairs wrapping all the way around and then just finishing up at that cobblestone stair. So now in between those first two stairs we placed, we're going to dig out a line of blocks in the ground and I'm going to go one cobble, skip a block, three, and then I'll put two up the end there and we're going to put two stone and another right there. Now matching the cobble and the stone that we just placed, we're going to place stairs and we're going to place them upside down facing from this direction. So I've got a cobble block there. I'm going to put a cobble stair on top. You can see it's upside down. Above the stone, we're going to put a stone stair and we're just going to keep going along, just copying the blocks that we've got below. Okay, now we've done that, we're going to waterlog all of our stairs here. So starting in that cobble one on the end, just waterlog every second stair. And now what you can do is you can actually hoe the ground here. And even though that water is one block above, it will hydrate all of our earth. And the reason we place those blocks underneath is because you can see the very tops of them now once we've hoed that ground. So now we're just going to plant whatever you want in here. I'm going to plant potatoes. Okay, now that's done. We're going to go up to this end right here and right in the middle of this wall, I'm going to place an andesite stair there. Then we'll dig out the block in front, put a shroom light in and a campfire on top and you can put that out. So it doesn't need to be a shroom light. I just think the red light looks nicer underneath the campfire. And now we're going to wrap stairs all the way around. I'm going to do a mixture of andesite, stone and cobblestone. So just continue to wrap these all the way around just like that. Okay, come over to our little entrance staircase and we're going to place two dark oak doors. We're going to place them facing from this direction just on top of the stone right there. So make sure the door handles are facing in the same direction and they're directly in line with these stairs. Now on each side of that we're going to place two dark oak logs. 
with two chiseled blackstone on top and then two upside down dark oak stairs. Now grab some snow blocks and just on top of that first stone rectangle that we made we are just going to place a line of snow. So go ahead and wrap that all the way around and then come back to our doorway and grab some polished blackstone walls and place them each side of the door like so. And then on the left here, starting with a blackstone brick wall, we're just going to place one every second block and continue doing that until we wrap all the way around. And when you get to the corners, just place them on each corner like that because then once we get back to the other end, we're going to switch to the blackstone walls and in these gaps in between, we're going to be placing these and they will go right in the corners. So just keep going until you've filled all of these in. Okay, now we're going to do the floor of the interior. So come to the inside, look at our doorway and directly under this dark oak on the right, we're going to place a spruce stair and we're going to place six in total. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to put four coming out on the ends. One, two, three, four and one, two, three, four, and then we're just going to turn around to this side and make a little rectangle. Now grab some daylight detectors, and on the side where the door is, we're going to place two there, and then two right there, and then back to your spruce stairs, look in this direction, we're going to place one in the middle, and one in the same spot on the opposite side. Then we're going to go spruce slabs, and cover up all our grass, and then spruce trapdoors. We're going to go one, two, three, four. And that's our low Japanese table with cushions on either side. Then what you can do is just go ahead and cover up all the rest of the grass on the inside here with our spruce planks. And you'll probably be using more now than I have in the materials list in the description. Uh, that's because we're going to be knocking out some of these in a moment and putting in hidden lighting. Okay, we're going to start putting up our walls and we'll do the wall at the front first. So grab some snow and we're going to build up one, two, three, four snow blocks. And I just want you to run this all the way along. Okay, so that's how you should be looking now. I want you to come along to the left hand side and we're going to skip two blocks. And then at the third block, we're going to knock out six right there and just fill in that entire gap with spruce fences and then on each side we're going to place warped trapdoors against our fences. Now come over toward the door and we're going to skip a block of snow from the door and then on the second one we're going to knock out a little window there, put in fences with warped trapdoors in front and in the same spot on the other side of the door we will do the exact same thing. Now, on top of these polished black stone walls, we're going to put three fences on each side, and they will have a warped plank on top. Now, just above our door, I'm going to put two right way up spruce stairs with spruce slabs on each side, and just underneath the slabs, spruce trapdoors. Okay, now we're going to do the two shorter walls, and these are exactly the same on both sides. So I'll show you one and you can copy it to the other. So the first thing we are going to do is build up this wall four blocks tall, just like we did at the front. Then what you can do is right in the middle, we'll knock out those two blocks and then two on each side and we'll fill these up with spruce fences and then grab your warped trapdoors and we'll place two against the fences on each side. Now above, we're gonna go one, two, three, spruce slabs on the ends we're going to put two spruce trapdoors they will have spruce fences underneath and sole lanterns hanging from those so go ahead and copy that to the other side then we'll do the back wall and to begin we will do exactly what we did before we're going to add another four snow blocks all the way along so then come along to the left hand side we're going to skip the first two snow blocks and then on the third we're going to knock out these blocks here we're going to fill in those with our fences and then two warped trapdoors on each side just like that now on this end it's exactly the same skip the first two blocks and then you can put in your window 
And just like the one on the other side, this is just that design again. And then find the blocks right in the middle and we're going to knock out another six right there. And the window is once again exactly the same. Okay, now we're going to come along to our shorter walls again. And this will be the same on the other side, so I'll show you this one and you can copy it over there. Find the block in the middle, we'll put a snow block on top. And then another two each side of that and then another one right up the top. Then grab some smooth quartz blocks and we'll place one right there and one right there. Now grab bone blocks. We'll place one in that corner, same on the other side and one against that snow block right up the top. Then the black stone buttons, we'll put one on each end right there. Now grab some stone and up the top here we're going to place one stone block there. And another one toward the front, same on that side. And then right up the top, we'll place a stone block with a warped plank in front. Now you can come down to the ground here and we're going to grab these prismarine walls. We'll place one underneath each of those bone blocks. And then grab smooth quartz slabs. Place one there and one underneath the stone. And exactly the same on that side. And once again, whatever I show you on this side, copy to the other side. So grab some warped planks, we'll place one next to the bone block, and then two right there, then switch to warped slabs, we'll place one against the bottom half of that, and then one right there. And we'll do the exact same thing on this side. So put our warped planks in, switch to slabs, and put those two in. And then we're going to come up on the diagonal. So we're going to go one, two, three, four slabs, just like that. And the same right here. Then right up the top, we'll place one against the top of that warped plank. Now switch to warped stairs. Come up here, we're going to go one on top of that, that uh, quartz block with one out toward the front and the same just above that. So same here, one on top of the quartz, one toward the front, then two more up there. Then right up the top, we're going to go one, two, three warped slabs. And then come down to the side here. And what we're going to do is against those stone blocks, we're going to place two upside down warped stairs. Then just down on the diagonal from those, we are going to place two warped trapdoors. And when you're placing all this warped wood, feel free to mix in some dark prismarine blocks every now and then because they just add a little bit of extra detail. So now we're going to come to the inside of our building here and on the wall where our door is just look over to this corner stair in the floor and not on that block but on the plank just next to it we're going to place a stripped dark oak log and we're going to build that up four blocks tall with a chiseled black stone on top and in the same spot on the opposite wall we are going to build the exact same thing. Now we're going to build another one right in the middle. So one, two, three, four chiseled black stone, but then we're going to place two extra stripped dark oak on top. Then we'll put two lying on this side, on each side. Then switch to spruce planks. We'll put two there and two there with warped planks on the end. So make sure you're looking in the same direction I am. So I'm on the side with our table. On the left hand side here we are going to fill up that gap with snow but on the right hand side I'm just going to put two snow up the top and then underneath two upside down spruce stairs. Then we'll come into this room and in the gap place two spruce doors. Then grab yourself a fence, we'll place it against the middle black stone and hang a lantern. And then we'll come around to this side. This time we are going to hang our lantern right there from a fence and then just grab two more fences and place them right there. Now place a spruce slab against the top half of that snow block and we're just going to run these all the way along until we reach the other side of our house and then grab our stripped dark oak logs and place it against that stone block and just run it all the way along and then do the exact same thing on the opposite side, just run these all the way over. And once you've done that, grab some warped planks and we're just going to run a single line of these all the way along here. Okay, come along to our doorway and place a warped slab just against the bottom half of those warped planks. And then just on the inside of that, we're going to go one, two warped slabs there, 
and one, two right there. And then we'll place two on top of that snow with an extra two coming out toward the front. So we've got a nice little arch. Now on the slab on these corners here, right down the bottom, we're just going to run these slabs all the way along until they connect to the edges of the roof. And then just above that, slabs again, just run these all the way along here until they connect to the corners. And then you can just put a line of slabs on top of our snow. And do the same thing up the back, but it's a bit easier because we don't have that arch in the way. So we'll run a line of slabs along there, another one here, and then another one on top of the snow. And just remember, I'm using all warped wood, but when you build it, go ahead and mix in a little bit of dark prismarine. So from here on in, it's exactly the same on both sides. So I'll show you this one and you can copy it to the other. We're going to start with slabs against the top half of those planks there. So you can see the roof's coming up on a nice angle. And then we're going to do a line of stairs, followed by another line of stairs, and then finish with a line of slabs up the top. So you can see the nice curve of the roof. So just run them all the way along. And that's how you should be looking when you're done. But if you don't want mobs spawning on your roof at night, you can put in two lines of warped buttons just at these heights right here and just run them all the way along. And of course, do the exact same thing on this side. Okay, we are all done on the exterior. Let's go inside and do some furniture. So we're going to look above our fire pit here. And I want you to hang two chains just next to the snow wall like so. Then skip a block and hang two more chains. On the end of the chains, we are going to put some spruce fences and then connect all of these with spruce fence gates. Just like so. Now hold shift and place a spruce fence against one of those fence gates so it's just floating in the air in the middle. From that we will hang a chain and then you can put a cauldron just underneath that. Now for a bit of extra decoration we'll put a chest right there. In the opposite corner we are going to put a barrel and then I'll put a smoker next to that and a furnace. And then look over to this window over here and just underneath the middle of that window I'm going to put a spruce fence there, skip a block, place another one and then we'll put three spruce trapdoors on top. Now you can go ahead and put in some hidden lighting so you can see these trapdoors I've got scattered around. So all I've done is buried a sea lantern in the ground just underneath the trapdoors. So one over there next to the chest, another there. One next to our table and one just in front of that door. So you can go ahead and put those in. Okay, now we will head into the next room. And we're going to look at this wall over here. I'm going to put two single chests there. Then grab stripped dark oak wood, the one with bark going all the way around. I'm just going to put two lying on their sides. Then we'll put down two red beds and two dark oak slabs against the ends. And then you can see I've got my three trapdoors with hidden lighting there. Just go ahead and put those in. Okay, now we're going to look over to this corner here. So if you're walking through the door, it is directly ahead. We'll put an upside down dark oak stair there. And another one there with a dark oak slab in the middle. And a dark oak slab down in front. And then looking from this direction a dark oak door and then on each side of our slab we'll put two dark oak signs. Now you can grab a flower pot and we will place it in the corner with a corn flower inside and then an oak pressure plate right there. And that is it guys. That is your cook's house 100% complete. So this was a super duper simple house to build guys. And just remember, if you're wanting to build an entire city, you can build this over and over. Just on the second one, don't put in the garden. On the third one, change the entrance a little bit. On the fourth one, make the house a little bit shorter. This one's pretty long. And you can do the same design over and over and just get so much value for your money building. Slightly similar houses, so they all look good in a city together. But uh, yeah, just with those tiny little differences. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Cortez Reno, and I will see you later.